All right, welcome back to the channel, guys. My name is Jeremy. I help online coaches scale. And today I have one of my clients, Joe, on with me. And uh, I'm really excited for this one. Joe's been absolutely crushing it with his fitness coaching offer. Uh, he's got such a cool, very uniquely positioned offer too. And we'll dive into that too. Um, but uh, he's been absolutely crushing it in the first like month or so in the program. And uh, I just wanted to kind of strike while the iron's hot. And uh, I know you've been signing a ton of clients you said you just mm -hmm. signed like i think six of them six high ticket clients while you're away on vacation and hit a record month pretty much your first month uh in the program so yeah joe welcome to the channel brother and uh hey. thrilled to have you on here yeah thank you bro i'm glad to be here i'm glad to uh serve in any way i can awesome so you mind just giving a quick little rundown kind of like who you are what you do how long have you been doing it kind of what's the background and, and stuff like that yeah, sure. So uh, my name is Joe Jarrell. I'm, I'm an online fitness coach and uh, I help Catholic men lose weight and kind of become strong role models for their family. So um, that's kind of my sales avatar. Uh, yeah. So literally one year ago, almost to the date, uh, about three days ago, I was in law school and it just didn't align with my values. I'll say that. And so I dropped out and then started an Instagram account to like coach, coach people. And, um, yeah, basically did no advertising, nothing like that. Just posted reels every day and uh, just kept doing that and learned how to sell. And then I met Jeremy, I would say, I think a month ago, Jeremy, and then uh, started working with him. So that's kind of been the process. So about about 12 months I've been coaching. That's awesome, man. So yeah. before it was just kind of purely organic, um, just making content, stuff like that. I imagine maybe just some cold DMs and whatnot. Um, what was that like and kind of what led you to start working with me as well. Yeah. So it like, it works in the beginning for sure. Like to, if you post reels and they go to people and then you message the people that like it, like that's how pretty much everyone starts, or at least that's how I started. And I would just message everyone. And I did that for like nine months and, um, yeah, just slowly grew. And then, um, my, my, my account grew too. I got to about 15,000 followers with pretty decent engagement. So I was happy with that. But then kind of the same people started liking the reels. And so I had to wait for a reel to like pop off before I got like an influx of new people. And that only happened one in every like 20 reels. And so I didn't like that. I didn't have like a consistent, like I didn't have two, three calls booked a day like I do now. I had like two, three a week. And it was frustrating because like you can't like bank on anything. That's not a consistent um, like right. lead flow. So anyway, um, that's how it was beforehand. A lot of, a lot of DMing on my end. Gotcha. Yeah. It's uh, it, it's a very common trend pretty much with all my clients where it's just inconsistent and stuff like that. But uh, as you said, before we started recording too, like, I think you came in at, at the perfect spot at the perfect time where you had such a strong foundation of content and organic that mm -hmm. once we pretty much like, like on our onboarding call, I remember I was in Vegas and we hopped on you like scripted out your ads and then just like launched them week one. And then you just popped quick. Yeah, dude. Um, so I'm still yeah. running the same ad with a 40% profile per uh, what's it called? Profile cost per profile visit. It's been at oh, yeah. 40 cents since I, since I ran it, wow. it never changes. It's so goaded. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, man. It's funny. Um, a little off track here, but uh, on a call earlier with um, the community, we were chatting as well about just like simplicity and keeping things very simple. And like, I've been running one ad for about nine months and like record months with just one ad. Uh, one of my other clients, like same thing. He did like a 120 last month or something like that. One ad, Tom, he's cranking one ad. He's doing over a hundred a month. So it's like, a lot of people confuse things and, and create a lot of unnecessary complexities. So I love that you're just, you're sticking with the basics and you're just kind of following the process. And we found the winner pretty much like what I love about this too, um, is like, we found the winner, like first try. Yeah. We screwed that out on the, on the onboarding call, launched it. It's just hitting and, uh, it, it's been super cool. So, um, I'm curious to know, like from your side, what do you think when it comes to the ads, like on a very granular level, like, what do you think? is like one of the biggest reasons why that ad's working so well right now. And what could somebody do to kind of like fix their ads or, or write better ones? 
Yeah. So I would definitely say using the language that your niche knows and would, would use. So I'm very much about riches are found in the niches. So I only help Catholic men. And honestly, people say that's like niche down, but really there's like a lot of Catholics out there. So it's not that niche. But the cool thing is, is like there's words that my avatar uses that like no one else would use. And so when I use that, it immediately increases the, um, the trust factor because, you know, in marketing, no like and trust immediately mm. increases the trust factor because they're like, oh, he's one of me. Like, um, I don't, I don't remember the rule from influence by Robert Caldini, but one of the rules is like you relate to them by using their language. And so that's huge. You really want to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Cause if awesome. I said, yeah, if I said something like, are you a hardworking man who needs to lose weight? It's like everyone could vibe with that, but like, I'm not in the niche. hundred percent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's what's so like unique and special about yours too. Because it, it it is so niche down. A lot of people are like afraid to do it too. I hear a lot of the times people are like afraid of going too specific, too niche and stuff like that. Um, Dude, there are. It's, oh, go ahead. Oh, yeah. What do you, I'd love to hear your take on that. Yeah, it's uh, it's asinine to think that you're too niche down. It really is. If you have 300 clients at $350 to $400 a month, you are an $80,000 a month business. You're a seven-figure run rate. 400 people. You can't find 400 people, 8 billion people on the planet. It's absurd. So like there's a 1.6 billion Catholics, half of them are male. I got enough, you know, and I need 300 to make a seven figure run rate. So most people aren't niched down nearly enough in my opinion. I love that. Yeah. That's my opinion. What kind of thoughts did you have regarding ads before you saw what they're capable of? Overwhelm. I, uh, Hormozy obviously built gym launch basically with mainly ads. I don't know if he was popping off with content back then. So he built gym launch with just ads. And I remember listening to the game and just being like, I can't touch that. Like, that's not my wheelhouse. I'm uncomfortable with that. That's not me. I just have to go viral. But then, uh, I mean, that's why, that's why I reached out because I didn't know what I was doing. And then once you learn it, you realize how powerful it is. That's awesome, man. That's yeah. awesome. What have been, uh, <clears throat> curious, like going through the program and stuff like that, what's been some of like the main takeaways, just some of like the biggest kind of like lowest hanging fruit levers you can pull, um, or that you did pull that have kind of unlocked your growth. Cause, um, you've, you've shot off pretty quickly. I think you, you've signed what, like nearly 20 high ticket clients in the last month. Yep. Um, had a record last 30 month. days. Like, yeah. That's insane, man. Yeah, it's I'm I'm smiling all day. <laughs> um, I would say uh, it can be really overwhelming to hire a setter, VA, whatever you call it. Um, the process that you guys do to help with that is very like calming because like it's scary to hire people and to find the right person and to trust them with all that stuff and the login info and whatnot. So um, mm -hmm. you guys help a lot with that. Um, yeah, I felt very comfortable with that. And then I would say the other thing is like, the sales training is way, way better than anything I've gotten outside of this program. Um, wow. Phenomenal. I completely followed the sales training to a T, binged the videos like multiple times. That's all I do now. And sales, awesome. are, sales are good. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, oh, that's incredible. Um, what's the what's the price of your program? Like how are you structuring that? Because I'd imagine a lot of people are watching this kind of wondering, oh, is he like kind of lower ticket, higher ticket? What does that mean? Uh, yeah. How long is it? How do you structure that? I just do $2,100 packages for six months or um, $500 a month. Hmm. And the reason for that is I have over 10,000 in recurring MRR. And so that's plenty, like totally plenty good. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to get PIFs. So what one strategy that um, one of your guys taught me, the sale, um, uh, he helps structure sales. I can't think of his name, but anyway, um, he told me like really, make a delta between the PIF and the monthly recurring that the total monthly would be. So that's what I did. So it's, so it's 2,100 or 500 for six installments, which is 3000. Yeah. And so, yeah, just trying to up my PIFs, but it's not that I don't think it's a crazy package. I think it's actually pretty well priced. I could probably go higher and uh, yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome, yeah. man. And I know a huge part of like your program too revolves around like shared values in the community. You mind just kind of touching on that and like, how, what what kind of impact has that had just on kind of the back end or even the front end on the sales side as well, kind of bringing the bringing more people in? 
Yeah. So community is like, I can't stress enough how important community is for like a coaching program. If they fuck with the community, they won't leave. They'll st they'll come for like your course and your meal plan or whatever, but they'll stay for like the people they meet. So it's, and, and um, if you can find like a vision or like a shared value that can like wrangle the whole community, you're set, you can get renewals, you can get Ascension. And so anyone listening, like really hone in on that, even whatever level you're on, just, just hone in on that. Sorry, I forgot the question. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think you nailed it. Okay. Um, yeah, because I'd imagine a lot of people, A, sign up and join because of the tight-knit community and the shared value structure, but then they also stay and renew because of exactly that too, right? Exactly. Yeah, because they're like, oh, it's they, it's a community. People pay, and especially after COVID, people really are one big pain point in a lot of prospects is community. And so if you can provide that and they share their values, they feel like at home, they'll pay for that. Yeah, no doubt. That's awesome, man. Mm -hmm. um, I know a lot of fitness coaches specifically follow me and watch my stuff. What advice would you have to somebody who is in your shoes about like Joe from like four weeks ago, where you were relying on organic, letting the, the like trying to make your content go viral and just kind of like dealing with the, the inconsistencies and the lack of predictability there. What advice yeah. would you have them? So I would say um, like build a strong base of content. Like that's important because when they come to your page, they want to see like, you know what you're talking about. But um, I know the fear you're having about ads, which is I don't know how to do them. I'm not going to spend a bunch of money. I want to pop off first and get like a million followers and then I'll consider ads. Spending money on ads is like, <laughs> like if it it's not that crazy and you see results, you can measure the analytics like you're very aware of how it's going and you can tweak things so you're you're building it up in your head to be this really scary behemoth and it, it, it's not um you're just you're just scared so just take the step um because here's the real secret i think um both are going to be helpful in growing your account like you should but do content but you can't skip out on ads like they're very beneficial so you owe it to yourself that's awesome yeah i yeah. think it's very much so it's, it's not like one or the other is like both just supplement each other so well. Yes. And when you do that, like when you, when you merge the two, like if somebody has like a really strong foundation of organic, then they start launching ads. They just, like I, I see it time and time again, they just pop right off. Um, yeah. Well, just, like if we just step outside and think about like the concept of an ad, like you can pay to have a particular type of content, go to a specific demographic. That's like, we all sh that's so powerful <laughs> like every fitness coach listening to this should be like wow that's that's what it is like you can pay to have this content put in front of the audience that you want so yeah. just think about that for a sec so pretty helpful yeah that's awesome let's uh let's kind of double click on that a little bit too because i know a lot of people that just do organic they struggle with lead quality so they talk to a lot of broke people, people that aren't quite down their alley. I know you have a very, like, you have a high ticket fitness coaching offer and it's only for Catholic men. I'd say that's like checking both those boxes. It's probably pretty hard to do organically because you don't really have control over who's seeing your content, who's coming to you and kind of where they're at in, in their life and journey. Right. So um, I'd love to just kind of hear your thoughts on, on that concept in general. Yeah. Well, it can be because content goes to everyone. And that is why, at least for my niche, ads are so helpful because I can dial in exactly who this is going to. And since we share values, it's a much higher click rate to my page. So yeah, you have to, for me at least, I would have to qualify in the DMs if they share my values. And that's like, uh, and if they don't, like I can't talk to them because I have to keep the, the policy in the group. So um, yeah, definitely helpful to like go and grab those people with ads. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And what's it been like, uh, bringing on a setter? How's that been? And how's it been working with one and kind of just having somebody pack out your calendar? Yeah. Well, I have 20 calls booked this week, Jeremy. So I would say it's the single most single, uh, highest leverage probably decision I've made in my business so far because 20 wow. calls is pretty nice. And, uh, I didn't set any of them. So, <laughs> and it's commission wow. only. It's crazy. It's insane how, like you said, how leveraged that is. Because if you think about it, like breaking down the funnel too, from like the top to the bottom, it's like yeah. 
you don't really have to put as much effort into content to go viral to get the leads because they're already coming every day with the ads. And then you don't even have to like spend time on the DMs booking them because your setter is doing all that for you. So literally like all your time is going towards right now is just like taking sales calls and closing them and making money and then like coaching your clients. And so it's, it's just like, it's a perfect combination mm -hmm. there because you're just, you just been buying back your time by adding leverage in your business. Right. Yes. And the cool thing is, is if they come through the ads, they're the exact, cause I crafted my ad to only bring people that I want. So like the people I'm hopping on the calls with very qualified. In fact, I removed a lot of friction in my, um, my working the leads process, the lead nurture process. So when I'm booking a call with them, I don't ask, I don't have them fill out an application anymore. I don't even have Calendly questions. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm still closing around 50, 60%. So that's crazy, you know? Yeah, that's insane. 50% yeah. of 20 calls this week. There's 10 sales at 2,100 bucks. There's yeah. 21K. Or if they do 500 a month, that's 3K a package, which is, it's going to be a good week. And there's a seven figure run rate right there. If you do 20K a week, there's 80K a month. And there's a million a year. Dude, dude, don't get me excited. <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> I'm yeah. just saying, give you a little bit of a taste of uh, what's possible. And you're just scratching the surface of that literally a month in. Um, yeah. And this, for everyone listening, uh, my ad spend limit stuck at 50 Fifty dollars right now. So this is what the power of ads with just fifty bucks a day. That's powerful. Mm -hmm. Do you happen to know your return, like the ROAS right now? Yeah, four point four one. Nice, nice. Yeah, yeah and that's, that's uh, yeah. I'm very very happy with that. That's awesome, man. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it, it's super cool to like kind of see your growth so quickly. Um, and actually, just last weekend, I was talking to, I was at a, an event here that um you're gonna you're going to come to we won't mention any names but yeah. uh but i actually had a few people like mention your name as well I'd be like man yeah you're working with joe and blah, blah blah so it's cool to kind of like see that ripple effect as well um I, yeah i, I want to say that's is that how you heard about me in the first place by somebody else or no i saw ads? i saw one ad i saw your client results and i texted you so <laughs> um, but it just, it's, it's purely a uh, coincidence that you were, you were also in Kelowna. So, yeah. Oh, that's funny, man. Yeah. Um, and the only reason I didn't come up was because, um, so I was visiting, uh, my, my girlfriend's family and, uh, it was just like, it, things were going well with her family. And I'm like, should I leave and ditch them or should I probably meet the, the family a little more? So I stayed, but yeah, um, smart yeah I'll, I'll be up there again. Oh Yeah. Yeah, there's, there's lots of stuff going on here all the time. So mm -hmm. we're trying to recruit a bunch of people to come here. And we got some like, hunters. Dude, it's like whatever reason Kelowna has like you, Dan Martell, PT Dom. Like, I don't know what's going on in that city, but it's, it's popping off. Oh, yeah. It, well, I would I might be a little biased, but I think it's it's the nicest city in Canada. So if there's anybody like from Canada, it's like it most likely will end up coming here. Um Nice. Probably because of that. So we're putting Cologne on the map. But, Let's go. <laughs> uh, yep. Um, <clears throat> well, that's awesome, man. Um, here, here's a note too, like in terms of like your sales process. So it sounds like you've, you've got the lead quality down, you got the quantity down too. Um, and then in terms of like getting on sales calls, like a lot of people struggle to close 50 to 60% of their calls. Like what's, what have been some of like the biggest lessons when it comes to sales that helped you have such a high closing rate? Um, I like the concept that 10% is never going to buy. 10% is always going to buy. And then 80% just need help making a decision. And so your job as a salesman, if they truly believe that the product does what it says it's going to do and gets them to their goal, and they believe you're the man of your word and you're going to help them, and they believe it's going to work for them, you kind of have like a moral obligation to like guide them to commit. That's like a very virtuous thing for you to do because you're helping them make a decision that's going to help them. It's kind of like when our moms would like have to sell us on brushing our teeth. Like that was a good thing for her to do, but it was sales. And so your job in the sale is to get them to make a decision. It's not to get cash. It's not to up your numbers. Treat it like that. And when you think like that, you're then dealing with like arguments and fallacies and them distorting something and you can kind of cut through the BS and you're not emotional. You're just helping them make a decision. That's huge, man. 
So I know a lot of people get so fixated on the numbers and the money, they get so attached to the outcome. But what I'm hearing right now is like, you're so just attached and like attached to helping the person make the decision that they know they need to make, but they might just be a little afraid. They might be telling themselves some weird stories in their heads as to why they shouldn't, why they couldn't, stuff like that. And you're really just help guiding them to changing their life. Yeah. Uh, and you can even call them on their BS. Like if they're like, awesome, man, I'm going to need to think about it. And you're like, John, I think we've been thinking about this for three years, haven't we? You told me you've struggled for three years. Okay. And you hopped on a call around the call. You're out of the way here. Like we're six inches from gold, you know, like call them on their BS and be like, you don't need to think more. This isn't my idea, Jimmy. You know that we don't need uh, more time. You need more information. So just, just talk to me. I'm here. Love that. Yeah. There's sauce right there. Yeah. And I love your tonality there too, because I can tell like you're really building a connection with somebody on the other end and you're treating them like a real human being. Whereas like a lot of people I see make the mistake when trying to handle objections is they're just so like robotic and like, they're just, they, they're trying to just follow a script and stuff like that. But like when you actually truly care, then like that's the most powerful way to help somebody make the decision and kind of get out of their own way there too, isn't it? Yes. I don't read any scripts. I, I script the whole, like I have it memorized how I like go through the beginning, like what's your biggest fitness struggle, all that. But when I pitch the rest closing is all listening to them being like, what's, what's going on? What, what is he avoiding? Like what distortion is he dealing with? And then just talk to him. And so, yeah, you won't get them all when they give objections, but yeah, I get, I get a decent amount. So I love that. Yeah. And your tonality is very key there too. For the people listening, like listen to his, his tonality. He's not, it, it, it's not you versus prospect and your body and head. It's like, Hey man, like what's really going on here? Right. Like you've been thinking about this for three years, John, come on. Like exactly. That was and, good. Yeah. And like, it's like you and him versus his problem rather than you versus him. And I think a lot of people make that mistake when, when dealing with objections too is like they get like triggered and like offended personally when somebody yeah. gives them an objection they get pissed off yeah no dude they honestly dude people almost want to buy like they want to change their life they just need to be helped and if you treat it as like this is just a fun conversation practice your tonality i would say to so say something like i'm the only source of information you've got and i'm here so let's talk about it that's what i'm here for like make it so friendly to where they don't feel attacked at all. And they'll like kind of open up and be like, well, I bought so many programs before. It's like, all right, you know, going in. There it's, it is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's cool, man. Yeah. That's really powerful because uh, like you said, a lot of people, they don't make it fun. They don't make it friendly. And I think they honestly do more harm than good. And handle projections in a very like combative way rather than like a, a helpful guiding way. Yeah. And I get it. Like I've gotten heated after a call. Like oh yeah. You're dealing with emotion. You get pissed that someone's like stringing you along. Like I get it. But like you put in the reps and you get you just get better. Totally. Totally. Yeah. yeah. Well that's awesome, man. Um curious to know too, like what's one thing you wish you knew like a few months ago that you know now? just in business in general? Uh, I would say it's scary to make changes, but like that, like, I think that's why I was stuck at 10K for so long because I was stuck at 10K for like five months and I didn't change anything. And so like, you cannot grow if you don't change, I don't think, because the thing that got you to where you are isn't the thing that gets you to the next spot. And mm -hmm. so like, why was I stuck at 10K? Well, I wasn't running ads and I didn't have a setter. And it's like, those are two really big things that are going to help you. Um, I don't know. There was just, I was scared to change. So you can't be scared to change. Like listen to people who have been where you want to be, who are at where you want to be, and then just do what they say, regardless of the fear. I love that. Yeah. I love that. And you mentioned that uh, you hit a record month too. Do you mind kind of touching on that and um, walking us through kind of A, what the record month was, and then also B, like kind of some of the things that you think led to that as well. Yeah. So 23 K cash on hand was my record month, which is good because uh, especially for like my 12th month, I'm really happy with that. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, but the re revenue for like the, the MRR is around 10 K, which is like the total revenue I gained last month is like much, much higher than 23 K. So I'm really happy with that. If I can figure out how to get more piffs, like 
we'll be cruising at 40k a month easy yeah is that next for you that's the next target 30k is this target month um okay so we should hit it we're on track yeah so that's awesome dude a couple flash sales to renew and uh we'll get there right <laughs> do a little price raise campaign yeah yep. i did that to hit my record month last year like 217 i said price is going up on this date get in now it'll never never be this low again Nice. And then I'm use that. <laughs> cleared the pipeline right then and there. Um, it was slow after though. So when you do sales, that's why I don't really do them very often. Um, when you do like a sales promotion like that, it like, yeah, you can have a, a massive record month and just clear the pipeline and get a ton of leads coming through from guys that are kind of sitting on the fence or kind of like lurking in the shadows a bit. But then like you kind of you steal from future you for about the next like month or so until it, it fills up again. So be aware, but it is, if you're pushing for something, you have a big goal to hit, that's a little ace up the sleeve that you can always do as well. But um, it's important that you like you stick to your word at, as well. And you don't do it too often. Yeah. Um, otherwise it'll kind of get drowned out a little bit. Um, one, one thing that I'm, I'm really curious to hear your take on too, because like, it's funny, man, I, I hear this quite a bit. And so what you said is like, you saw, like how you found me initially, you saw my ads, you saw my client results. A lot of people think my client results are like too good to be true. And they they don't think it'll be, it'll work for them. Uh, there's a lot of limiting beliefs around that. Like, yeah, but I'm different. I'm special. Like, what would you tell somebody like that? And like, did you ever have those thoughts? Like what was going through your head when you first found me? Because I know there's a lot of people that do the same thing that I do that suck and yeah. they don't get results. Um, so naturally, a lot of people view me as everybody else as like this scammer internet guru kind of thing yeah so no i'd love to just kind of hear your take on that yeah luckily i didn't think that and i do not think jeremy's a scammer jeremy's not a scammer um what i so those beliefs when you have those beliefs like that doesn't work for that like that's bs that's um probably you haven't done enough self-development work because you don't believe in yourself that's probably what that is S guys alex hormozzi is worth i think 200 million maybe more and he's 30 like four like anything is possible okay so if someone makes 10k a piff in a day it's possible okay <laughs> like um it should blow all beliefs away like the hormozy story personally i think so you can really achieve anything you make as much money as you want in a day i think what jeremy got me on was um there's this book called influence i think i just mentioned it by robert caldini and it goes over like the seven popular ways to influence human behavior and one of them is social proof and the whole idea of the book is that human beings don't have time to analyze everything. So when we get caught up in something that other people do, we like just, we just respond. And I think that's kind of what happened to Jeremy. I, I saw so many client results. I was like, yeah, checks out. So it's unreasonable that it wouldn't work for me. And so I just signed up. Love that. And what has it been like in the community as well? Very good. A lot of people are supportive. They help you out. Eduardo's the goat, dude. He's amazing. Um, Dude. yeah. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, Eduardo's his right hand guy and helps him out. It helps me out with that so much. I message him all the time. So there's a lot of support I would say, and then, um, uh, support in terms of you growing and then also support with your wins and your questions in the community from the other, other clients. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. Shout out Eduardo. He's a, yeah. a total beauty and an absolute weapon. Um, we posted that, uh, that recording of you and your setter and Eduardo a few weeks ago kind of diving into everything and unlocking. So uh, if you haven't seen that video yet, go watch that one because that'll show you how Joe is able to book 20 calls this week and oh, yeah. more than double his business in four weeks. So um, yeah. yeah, so that's a, it's I like had, a I had to stop years. telling my family how much money I make because it's like awkward. It's crazy. <laughs> and we're just getting started, Jeremy. I can't, dude, if I can, un, if I can un, uh, increase the ad spend limit, dude, it's game over. Why is it blocked right now? I want to see if I can do this right now. So I had a, a $50 a day uh, limit as well last year. And all I had to do is verify my business manager account. I had to submit some um, company documents and verify that. And then once I had that little like little check mark on the back end of my Facebook business manager, it just unlocked like $1,000 a day overnight. Okay. I'm going to do that tomorrow. I have it literally blocked off on my calendar because you told Eduardo and you told me that. So um, okay. I'm trying that I got all my documents ready to go. Perfect. Yeah. I had to, I had to resubmit about eight uh, documents about eight different times. I had to, okay. I had to change the order around. Cause one didn't have a phone number and my one was like 
my only phone number is my personal number. I don't have a business one, but I needed the business phone number and the name. And on the, it was a nightmare. So I kept just, I was talking to support for like two months, talked to like eight reps and they're all useless. And then, uh, so I just kept resubmitting it and just like, all I did was I just switched the order. I, instead of like, it was like bank statement and like, uh, like incorporation documents. And I just like switched yep. the order or something like that. I can't remember the exact ones, but like I literally uploaded the same ones again, just like one was in the first slot, one was in the second one. And then it worked. Um, okay. and then I just unlocked it. So there's a little bit of extra sauce for everybody Let's to see. deal yeah. with that. So keep me updated and shoot me a message. Uh, if that works, it might take a day or two or something like that for them to get back to you and review it. But, uh, yeah, that worked for me. It worked for Adrian too. And then he was able to crank up his ad spend because um, he was also capped. I think he was in a similar spot too. He like doubled his business from like 20K a month to 40. And then kind of just got capped there for a bit because his his ad spend was capped. And then got unlocked and then boom, blew past 50. So I think that's uh, that's definitely in the books for you very, very yeah. soon. It's so, my dream. <laughs> yeah. What uh, I'm curious to hear, man, like over the next like six to 12 months or something like that, like, what's like your big goal? Like what's, what are you aiming for next? What are you working towards? Um, kind of like, where do you want to take your business from here on out? Yeah. So I, I truly believe the TAM for this is really large. So I think we have like a eight figure company here. Um, and it's just systems. Like I think people like to work with people who share their values. So I think I can really scale this. Um, so hundred clients by the end of the year is the goal. And then 500 clients by 2027. Um, and then a mastermind tier after I start hitting around 50K. And then the mastermind tier will have, you know, a higher ticket. I don't know what you call it, like extra high ticket. Um, and mm -hmm. then events, more ascension. So yeah, I would say working that. Like, so two events a year, two events per year, plus a mastermind tier, plus renewals in the lower tier. I think we can really get like a multi-million dollar company. 100%, man. Yeah. You're set up so perfectly right now. And I love how it's only been a month. It feels like we've been working together for so much longer because like, we've just like grown so quickly. And yeah. like, I just can't imagine where you're going to be six months from now, 12 months from now. Like now that you've gotten a taste of what's possible and you've just seen that growth just unlock so quickly. I bet it's just like, it just expanded your like horizons as to like what's actually possible. And uh, in, especially in such a short amount of time too. Yeah, I look at content so differently now because like hmm. you're literally missing half the pie if you're not running ads. I truly believe that. And you can't really run it. Like, I don't know. I don't know what your thought is, but if you start running ads right when you begin, you have like no content. I don't know how helpful it's going to be, but if you yeah. do it after you've built a base, that's literally like a whole nother tool in your arsenal. Yeah. And you'll see once you get that, that limit unlocked too, then like double your budget double your business. Like, yeah, dude, sometimes it, it's, it's not quite so linear, but like pretty much pretty close mm -hmm. until you're kind of doing like a hundred a month, give or take. It's like, you're pretty much like around there anyways. Like just, if you want to make more money next month, just crank up your budget. And uh, it gets scary though, too. I will say when you start spending like hundreds of dollars a day, and like just like, you're getting billed like 500 bucks a day every yeah. single day and yeah. like a, a couple days go by you don't make a sale you're like oh fuck like what's going on yeah um, but <laughs> it uh, makes you want to close dude oh oh yeah, yeah. it lights a, a good fire under your ass to get things going so um yeah i'm excited for you to kind of experience that because it's it's definitely uncomfortable but that's how you you know you're growing too and that's exactly what's going to unlock that next level because it's very hard to get past kind of like it's very hard to get to seven figures just purely like organically without a, a system where you can just plug a dollar in and, and get four or five out like yeah awkward. yeah and you probably could but like it takes more time like it you should yeah. utilize every tool in your toolbox and ads are just such a such a good tool especially if you have a niche market i think you know yeah the weirder yeah. the offers the better they perform like yeah dude not weirder but like the more unique the more niche down like 100 percent. well yeah. yeah dude it's yeah because like it it differentiates you and like i know the pain points like a religious guy wants to practice what he preaches that's like language they use it's like you can mm. connect with them so much better yeah no yeah. that's awesome man that's awesome um really quick too i'd love to kind of hear just right now like i'm 
actually rebuilding the program. So from a purely selfish standpoint, I'd love to hear kind of like what were some of like the the best things going through the program your first month? What were some of the things that like led to your like that were kind of the biggest levers that we provided that led to your growth? Was it like the onboarding call with me where we scripted out your ads? Is it the the appointment setting support with Eduardo? Is it the sales stuff with Austin? Like was it the program? Was it none of that? I'd love to just kind of hear like just from a, a purely selfish standpoint so that I can optimize for more of that in the next iteration. Yeah. Helping me with the first ad was really helpful. That was, it makes you feel really comfortable because you're like, I'm here, bro. Like, this is how we're going to do it. Mm. And you have a couple of tactical videos in the training on like literally how to do the process of running an ad, which is very helpful, like very low level, like step by step, you know? So that's helpful. But honestly, dude, having like Eduardo to just answer any question. And sometimes I do it too much. He's like, he posts in the community, but it just having him there is like, it makes you feel comfortable because you're like anything yeah. I run into, I can go to Eduardo. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Eduardo, we appreciate you, man. Um, for those that don't know, like Eduardo's a uh, client success manager. So between him and I, we, we pretty much tag team all of our clients and he's got some really good skill sets that are more advanced than mine in certain areas. And then I kind of like, like he fills in a lot of my gaps. I feel a lot of his gaps. So basically kind of like whatever you need, um, at any given time we've, we've got that covered. So it's a, yeah, it's, it's a ton of fun work with him. He's an absolute weapon. And, yeah. Uh, and yeah, Jeremy teaches awesome. you how to like, Jeremy taught us how to like, uh, offload work onto your client success manager. So you can focus on like higher leverage things. And I'm literally doing that today. And, uh, I, I literally copied how Jeremy onboarded me to my new clients now. And they love it. Cause I liked it. And I'm like, Oh, you're telling me I don't have to like do all this myself. And so I, I offloaded a lot. Oh, that's awesome, man. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, before we wrap things up here, I'd love to just kind of give you one last shot to just provide any kind of piece of advice to somebody who has kind of been stuck and plateaued in their coaching business. Maybe for the last few months, they've kind of hit a wall, hit a ceiling. They're not too sure what to do to move forward. And uh, they're committed. They're showing up every day. They're, they're, they're putting the work in. Um, and they're just not really seeing the results. Like, what would you tell somebody who's just kind of going through that and they they feel like they're just, they're working and not really seeing the, the outcomes that they, they would like. Yeah. I would say, um, if you're going to be a content creator, like you need you, step one, do learn content. There's great programs out there on how to be a good coach with good content. Like I've been a part of them and they've changed my life. Do that. But then like, you need to realize if you want to dominate, you got to learn every tool. And I know you're scared of ads, but like it is, you're, you're obliged to learn them if you want to, if you want to be at the top. So, um, commit fully, learn them, have it in your toolbox and it's going to make you more money. Love it, man. And Jeremy's, Jeremy's got, Jeremy's got a program to help you do that. So <laughs> <laughs> would you recommend they join it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. As, as I look at my calendar full of calls, I recommend it. Well said, well said. Well, Joe, really appreciate you coming on, man. Uh, really enjoyed the the uh, conversation, and it's been super cool seeing your progress and your growth, being a part of your journey as well. And I know you're making such a big impact in your clients and changing their lives, and really just building something very special and very unique, and uh, just really cool. So it's it's an honor for me and Eduardo and the rest of the team to kind of be a part of that and help facilitate that. But ultimately, it does come back to you and your vision and what you're building and, and your work ethic and you showing up every day and, and doing the inputs and, and making stuff happen. So I just want to say it's been a pleasure from our side working with you so far. It's only been a month, which is crazy. Yeah. And we're just yeah. getting started. We've got so much more to go and uh, so much more to do, but uh, yeah, man, I just want to say like, we appreciate you. You've been awesome to work with and uh, appreciate your, your contributions to the community and just uh, everything you're doing is is really cool. So yeah, yeah, I really appreciate the kind words, man. I'm grateful to be a part of the community and I, I hope we can meet up in person soon. I'll come to Kelowna and we can, we can hopefully meet up hundred percent, man. Yeah. I'm doing the, uh, hosting the client, re client retreat mastermind in Spain in September, but I think something kind of more lower key in Kelowna is in the books in the, Dude. uh, the near future too. I think that would be really cool. And we'll, uh, I'd be about it. I'll, I'll talk to a few of the other guys in town here and we'll see if we can't set something pretty cool up. And Yes. Okay. Uh, Let me know, man. 
Yeah, will do. But thanks again, Joe. Really appreciate you, man. And uh, yeah, keep crushing it. Cool. Thanks, man. Talk to you later. Later.